Hi, my name is Grace Dahl. This is my UGS 303 final video project, so thank you. Common discourse regarding art is that there is no moral component, that the artist has no responsibility to maintain a source of ethics in their art. The foundation for all art, as stated in the aestheticism movement, is simply to be art. However, it is through this idea that art is reflective of the spectator that an artist must be willing to be held accountable for the consequences their art imposes. Through this, a sense of duality is created, as evident through Oscar Wilde's novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. The dualism found in Wilde's novel is present far beyond the borders of different social, cultural, and geographical regions, and the idea is unequivocally human. The idea that Wilde's novel is morally afflicted, in spite of the fact that it was written without regards to ethics, resulted from the duality present in human nature and, as a result, all art. Wilde himself was an advocate of aestheticism, an ideology that states all art is created simply for its beauty, as told by John Allen Quintus in his dissertation titled The Moral Implications of Oscar Wilde's Aestheticism. The principle of art for art's sake is developed throughout Wilde's novel, as seen in The Pursuit of Hedonism, in which the protagonist, Dorian Gray, seeks to live through beauty and youth without being held accountable for the sins of this pursuit. Duality is defined as an instance of contrast between two aspects of something, and the picture of Dorian Gray establishes the protagonist as someone who is constantly torn between two moral codes. Influenced by Lord Henry, Dorian suddenly becomes aware of his waning beauty. Convinced that his youthfulness is the key to his happiness, Dorian sells his soul to have eternal youth while his portrait ages. While Dorian escapes external and societal consequences due to the fact that he is eternally youthful and beautiful, the impacts of sin cannot escape the mind or the conscience. It is in the brain, and the brain only, that the greatest sins of the world take place. In this manner, the ideas of aestheticism are maintained through duality. Moral degradation should be accompanied by physical degradation, though Dorian attempted to conceal the physical aspect within art. In regards to his choices, Dorian is constantly pulled between doing what is morally sound and the instant gratification of deviant behavior. Dorian, however, is completely aware of his corruption, and thus is also aware of his two souls. In his essay on the duality of human nature, Larry Kritzer states that, though exaggerated and dramatized, this is perhaps one of the best descriptions in literature of a man meeting his own shadow and recognizing him fully as his own. This, too, was myself. This sentiment expertly describes Dorian, his arrogance and drama, his flippancy regarding his own actions, and the duality of having two selves, and then recognizing that fact. Dorian's duality is tied into his being. He is both morally corrupt and aware of his transgressions, which establishes the idea that while humans are constantly pulled between right and wrong, they don't act in ignorance. Dr. Pierre Carlo Valdesolo conducted a study that examined the processes that give rise to moral hypocrisy, a phenomenon in which individuals judge their own transgressions to be less morally objectionable than the same transgressions enacted by others. This notion suggests that, as humans, we recognize acts of moral corruption, but only when we're not the ones acting in sin. This solidifies the concept that duality, especially regarding our own human choices, is a human trait, not one that is confined to any one region. The fact that Dorian was allowed to live through beauty, committing a life of sin, is in itself a duality. Victorian England adhered to a rigorous moral conduct, and yet his beauty and societal status allowed for Dorian to live a corrupt life. In this manner, a sense of morality is derived in the reflections. Within the duality of the Victorian era presented through the picture of Dorian Gray, the ethics of society are brought into question. The ability for an individual such as Dorian to literally get away with murder simply because he is beautiful in a society that supposedly shuns sin, is reflective of the paradoxical truth of the time period in which Wilde lived. Perhaps it is for this reason that the picture of Dorian Gray was so ill-received by critics at the time of its publishing. While art is not created with any ethos, it is through the unforgiving reflection of the spectators within the art that determines its social morality. Beyond the picture of Dorian Gray, duality exists in many other cultures and works of art. Most notably, Darren Ofensky's film, The Black Swan, tells a story of a young dancer who descended first into a darker role and subsequently implied madness. Nina, the main character, begins her story as a picturesque dancer, but once she receives the role of the black swan, she finds that she doesn't have the allure or provocative nature that the role requires. Nina grapples with the duality of the white and black swans, the idea of being elegant and pristine versus primal and complicated for the entire movie. And while the movie is essentially plotless, the dark themes make the film interesting. One of the most intriguing dual roles is that of knowledge, inferred and implied. Black swans can be smart to abuse implied knowledge in the eyes of the naive white swans. They don't actually commit the cause, but they know the effect that they want via a twisted path. This can become even more confusing when the black and white swans reside within one person. Can they coexist? Do people transform from one to the other, or is it a matter of dabbling in the black ways that kills the white within us? 
The film wrestles with that concept, eventually ending in Nina's device, a suicide in attempts to fully fulfill her role as the Black Swan. In David Lynch's film Blue Velvet, the protagonist Jeffrey wrestles with his own duality. After finding a severed ear, Jeffrey becomes obsessed with exploring his quaint hometown's dark side, and is subsequently entered into a melodramatic, intensely volatile relationship with Dorothy, a lounge singer with ties to the severed ear. Jeffrey is introduced as a clean-cut, boy-next-door type, but soon becomes involved in sensual, sometimes frightening, hedonistic pursuits. In his journal entry titled The Duality of Hedonism in the Ambivalent World of Polarities, Robal states that hedonism, as an approach to life, is also distinguished by duality, whereby ambiguous life practices aimed at achieving the same principle based on the achievement, joy, and pleasure develop in parallel. Jeffrey, who is curious about a small-town murder, becomes intoxicated by the life Dorothy leads of chaos, sexual gratification, and deviant behavior. Why does Jeffrey find himself in these positions of questionable moral integrity? Because it is human nature to want to find the easiest, most pleasurable way to live. When given an opportunity to act in morally unsound ways without immediate consequences, man will almost always find itself acting upon their hedonistic pursuits. Blue Velvet explains this duality of man by showing how easy it can be to become entranced by this lifestyle, and Lynch uses his dramatized version of American Light life to shine a light on the moral degradation that exists in all humans. Some of humanity chooses to act on its hedonistic impulses while others choose to suppress them, but the desire is the same for all of us. Finally, while duality is found across many works of art, it is also found in cultural norm. In Japanese culture, the concept of hone, a person's true feelings, and tatme, the way a person acts in accordance to society and morality, is a common tool for identifying the feelings of wanting to live fully, but also morally righteous. In Naito's study of moral relativism in Japanese culture, it is stated that, in the West, we know about Hane, which deals with one's true motives, but we must pretend like it does not exist. Whether this is true or not honestly depends on the one reading it, but while Americans tend to act like all actions are morally righteous and societally adhering, Japanese culture fo focuses more on recognizing that both the Hane and the Tatme are a part of the human experience. And it is important to understand that when one makes a decision that respects morality, it is a conscious choice to do good. And it does not come easily. <laughs> Furthermore, the Cherokee folklore of the two wolves uses an animalistic metaphor to explain why humans want to be good, but also want to follow their own selfish wishes. The story says that you must feed the wolf you want to succeed, and that arbitrarily hoping that you make the good decisions is simply not enough. It is a process and it take, takes work, but as seen in the examples of the picture of Dorian Gray and Black Swan, failing to do so can result in disastrous consequences. In conclusion, while art may exist simply to be art, the duality that exists in human nature will make itself known, and this duality is something that exists in all of us. The desire to act selfishly is simply human nature, but the choice is still ours. Art, at its core, provokes emotion and playing upon a psychological contrast that makes us human gives artists the ability to elicit emotions in everyone. Thank you.